What's up, everyone? Welcome to yet another amazing season of Talk at Moments. Last season was quite a blur. We had so much fun, and I'm super excited that the season is back. As you can see, we're making so many changes. The setting has changed. The light is still the same, and I'm going to be changing things around much more. My name is Talk at Mackin Wife. This is your very first time of tuning in or hanging out with us on TM Pod. Where have you been? Uh, I don't know. So my my guest today is a producer turned musician, but still produces. His name is Young John, the it's weekend so producer, so aka so Young John on the streets right now. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm alright. Welcome good. to the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm happy to be here. This know. is the first time we've met in person, right? Actually, yes. And um, um. I mean, the first time I heard about you was obviously Young John, the Wicked producer. You were the guy that was yeah. always here on the track. And yeah. then you started doing music. Yeah, you know. And it's like, he sounds really nice. How's that been? How's it going? Yeah, it's been an amazing journey. Like, I mean, it's different from like what, what I've been behind. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But like, so far, so good. It's been an amazing journey. Mm. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the process step by step. You mm. know. Was it difficult for you to go from behind the scenes to now being in the limelight? Um, it, Difficult, like... What I mean is sometimes people are comfortable being the guy behind the scenes. You know what I mean? Like, okay, yeah. you hear my work. I don't necessarily want to be the guy who is in front of the camera and doing music videos and now having to deal with like... You know what comes with oh, yes. being a musician. I, I feel like I was just ready to step out of my comfort zone. You okay. know, I was I, I that old comfort zone. Mm. Like you know, yeah, there's a comfort zone, but sometimes it's better to just step out of it. Mm. You know, as you know, and that's basically what it is. Mm. And you're super cute. So I see how young girls are always like. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank I mean, you. I wasn't working. Yeah. I I literally was not supposed to be here, but then when they found out that you were coming, everyone's just like, "Oh my god, young girl, young girl, young girl. I'm like, "How do you deal with the the attention from the ladies?" I I mean, like, I'll say like, I don't know. I'm just like my I got my eyes on the prize. You Which know, is what. The prize now. I got my eyes on the prize now. Like I'm just all about my work, all mm. about my music, mm. you know. So I'm not really distracted by all of these things. Oh, do you call it a distraction? No, it's not. The I'm not... females are heartbroken right now. No, that's not what I mean. Like I don't think it's a distraction. Mm-hmm. I just feel like what's important is is the bag, you mm. know. I mean, let's not lie to ourselves. Like no matter how much. Um, the ladies love you or whatever. Like if you if you if you're z- on zero, it's all zero. You know what I mean? Like so, what is important is the grind. Cause like you know, understand. <laughs> so like that's really what's important. Cause that's yeah. really what's important. Yeah. yeah. But then don't you just find it weird that I don't know. Whenever I hear guys say that, this yeah. is me from a female's perspective. I feel like you guys put so much pressure on yourself already because you know you're like if you're on zero, the girls don't you believe in Serena kind of love, even if you don't have love that is like, no, I'm so, going to stay with this guy, we'll drink Gary together. I mean, don't you think that girls these days... I mean, so so the whole um, pressure love is not really just about love. I okay. mean, love is just to one side. Mm. Nobody really cares at the end of the day. You know, what's really important is uh, as a man, you definitely want to be able to take care of your family, True. take care of yourself, take care of your loved ones. So, apart from even love or being mm. able to cater for, you know, What's important is you still need to grind, bro. Mm. You know, so you can take care of like yourself, mm. your family, and all of that. I heard from the grapevine that all your girlfriends know who they are, and you're not a one man woman. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> Was that too early? <laughs> no. I, I feel attacked. Like Boy, you just, did you do what well, I mean? That's what we do over here. Did, well, so, is it true? That you don't believe in, like, a, you know, monogamy. It's not a one-man, one-woman thing. Yes. Yeah, so I, I believe, like, uh, most people are like this, but they just don't want to accept it or, like, you know, because everybody wants to be free at the end of the day. Mm. You know, free in the sense of, like, free in every single sense. And you cannot be, well, me, let me speak for myself. Mm. I don't think um, I want to be... Um, to be so into someone to the extent of not losing myself, you know. Cause but why do you have to lose yourself, John? Like, why? Don't you believe in one man, Adam, Eve, one man, one woman? One Adam and Eve, what happened? Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, we can argue that one. No. Adam was to blame. Oh. Adam was to blame now. Come on. How can God put you as the gatekeeper of a garden? Yeah. Eh? 
the woman came to meet you to say the devil told her to try something. Yeah. Did she force sin? She should have said, okay, you ate it. Let me see what happened see, to you. See, now everything is the man's fault. This is what I'm talking about. This <laughs> no, but let's be honest. She didn't, Eve didn't force him. Eve said to him, oh, I was out in the garden. The serpent said I should eat it. That nothing is going to happen to me. Yeah, fair enough, bro. Fair hey. enough. Like people have said no. Fair enough. So maybe it would have saved us more. <laughs> At least maybe God would just say, okay, woman banished. Man alone. They would not say, okay, men are really, really... Do you know what I mean? But I just... I I, I understand what you mean. Yeah. Uh, dating today is, is quite... um ghetto for lack of a better word yeah. so i can see why you know wanting to i mean i understand i honestly yeah. get it yeah i mean i feel like 2023 <laughs> i mean this is 2023 <laughs> so and the way things are in 2023 i'm sure it's even going to keep like getting worse yeah. and it's a hookup generation you, you know, i don't want to use that word mm-hmm. you know i mean like, when i say hookup I'm, i don't mean Payola. I'm not yeah, saying yeah. you hook up. Yeah. I just mean that people just people just hook up with each other yeah, you know, without any. Besides, I feel like we have different things to offer each other. So mm. you know, like please, like what? No, I'm not even trying talking like in a sexual way. Or yeah. Whatever. I just feel like according like if if you if you kick it off with someone, mm. it's because of you're feeding off the vibes, feeding off the vibration. You know, apart from all of that, so different people have different things to offer. Mm. you understand mm. and so I don't want to be limited to just you know so that's why you keep a bunch of them around I don't keep a bunch of them around I just I'm just free so I gotta ask you this do you think it's the environment you because we're very heavily influenced by our environment whereas yeah. some of all our experiences do yeah. you think that it's you know the field you find yourself in that makes you not believe in you know, one man, one woman type of love. Because, I mean, not trying to judge anyone, but musicians, you find a lot of girls that will say, I won't date a musician because they're exposed to too many women. The lifestyle of drinking, late nights in the studio, women are always around and it's like, he cannot be faithful. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's where you get this thing from? I don't think so. First of all, I need to correct the impression that musicians are like very promiscuous. Yeah, there's a lot of women around the scene there's this and that. There's everything all over the place. But like, everybody's doing all of these things. They're just not doing it out in the open. You know, musicians are just entertainers generally. Mm. Are outside in the open. Like, everybody sees what they do. No, Every- I think because they also get it on a different level. I have been in certain places yeah. where some musicians in this country... The first time I ever saw what it was like in Nigeria, I remember it was a long time ago we in a bar in VI and there was like the, the top three male musicians at that time. And I kid you not, girls that you would think, ah, come on now, come on now, Chelsea, come on now. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can be a fan of whoever, but literally grabbing, holding, yeah. touching. I'd never seen anything like that before. Yeah. I remember one of the girls caught me staring at her and she goes, I'm drunk. I was like, bitch, you, you're not drunk. You're literally misbehaving. So I think you guys, if I get it, everyone yeah. is exposed to, but you guys, it's on a thousand. When you go on yeah. tour, when you, <laughs> women probably try to boycott, find a way to, do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Can't lie. Yeah. yeah. So do you think that's what makes you feel like there are too many beautiful women in the world? Why should I settle with one okay, woman? So no, basically, that's not. Because ever, like, ever since I was a young, young boy, I always used to, I used to like question everything. You know? Okay. So, and I always used to question, why is this like this? Why is it like this? Why is it that this man has to? Why is that? I used to question everything, basically. Like, you know, I just never really had any concrete answers. So, mm. ever since then, I always wanted to explore the roots that, it's just like different from yeah I don't want to say it was fantasy because but I I had no reason for this but I just need like I want I want to know the reasons why this thing so Mm. I kind of live you know so growing up yeah I found myself in an environment you know even in school all of that there was always there was always this going on basically so like but I was just more maybe it's worse now because yeah Mm. I found myself in this environment have you ever been heartbroken before? I've broken. I was still, when I was in I let me secondary school. When mm. I was in secondary school, do you remember her name? Huh? Do you remember her name? No, I won't say. I don't. I don't. Remember. I'm not asking you for. But I'm saying, do you remember her name? Yeah, I remember her name, but I'm not going to say. It her was name. so. It was. Was it really bad? No, so I won't call it an outbreak. Yeah. It was more of like you know when you like someone, but you know the person liked someone else. Oh, did yeah. you ever tell her you liked her? No, I didn't bother to. So you lived with. Yeah, I'm that kind of person. I, 
I can't live with anything. Yeah, there's so many. Yeah, I'm that kind of person. So you didn't, you never told her never. that you liked her. Never. But what ever. if she felt the same way? It's gone. What's the law? What does that mean? <laughs> But you're chasing yourself out of amazing experiences that's when you do life. that. That's life. So why why didn't you tell her? There was no need. What do you mean there was no need? There you was don't no believe need. in the fact that if you are told that maybe she'll be like, I don't even like this guy. It's you I like. And then No, there's no need. In fact, she likes like all this there's no need for all this drama. Like you like someone else. No. <laughs> so, see, that's life. You can't have everything you want. Like the young John is stressing me out, guys. <laughs> I'm so stressed in this. You're stressing my stress levels I out. See. Why? Yes, I'm because sorry. I'm like, I'm sorry about no. That. What I'm trying to say is like, I hope you've left that sort of behavior. If there's a girl you like now, I hope you tell her. So okay, so so the thing is, my problem is not my. Don't let me call it a problem, but that was not like that when I was younger. But mm. like growing up, like I could easily. Likes maybe because I got used to it, I can like something now. And the next 30 minutes, maybe because I, maybe because of something, maybe something I feel is straight or like too. Be like, forget it and you move on. I would rather invest my time and energy. In oh, other you are tough. Oh. No, no, that's never oh, been tough, though. That's hmm. any girl that decides to fall in love with you, she's entering one chance. No, it's never like that. I'm the sweetest guy. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> oh God, I'm I'm serious. What did you do for Valentine's Day this year? I was I, I was performing. <laughs> <laughs> How many people did you val? Nobody actually. You didn't send flowers to anyone. No. <sighs> oh my God, you're stressing my stress levels out. But that I don't want it to be like I'm I'm like I'm against all of these things, mm-hmm. but like. I mean, it, what you like is what you like. If you, you don't understand. believe in, so you you are you ever gonna get married? Married. Mm-hmm. Be honest. No, I feel like even if I get to that extent of loving someone, like I don't think marriage. I don't know. Like that's the thing. But at, at the point I am now, like mm-hmm. right now, the mental state I'm right now. Mm-hmm. I, I still believe think... you have not met that one girl. And I like guys like you that talk like this because there's that one girl that will come around the corner. Father Lord, let her be close. That will really, Uloma, <laughs> perhaps, you know, because I wanted to ask about Uloma, we're getting there. But there's that one girl that will come around that's all of these things you're saying. You will watch this podcast and be like, ah. You mean, actually, I can't wait. So you do, you do want that. It's not like, like, I, like, Mish, like, I'm, I'm curious. Like, let me, let me see. Like, I'm, I, I go actually do like see I'm up, I actually like experience, you know, like see how it is. So you know they watch, you know they watch film, they see love. You know that's in a movie. You. I never, like I said before, I've trust me, I've seen people, I've seen sweet love. Oh my god, love. <laughs> but, <laughs> I've seen love, but at the end of the day, because like we are like. We are human. Mm. Like, there's so do you think that we were not created? I'm just asking, you know, yeah. because there are people who yeah. I've spoken to who yeah. feel like they believe it's man made, this whole marriage. No, this whole we're thing. actually created to love. But I just feel like we, our concept of love, probably we are getting it wrong. Mm. Because why is every marriage crashing? Why is every relationship Not every Christian? marriage. Not every do. Some people are happy. Abby? I, I I mean I mean to I'll ask because it's not like I'm married. Maybe you know some people. I don't, but like, I I like to us, think that some yeah, people if yeah. they're lying to this, I don't know. But I like no, to like, believe I, that. Some people are actually happily married. Mm-hmm. Happily married. Mm-hmm. But I feel like there's a lot of work that comes with it. There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of And you're not up for it. I don't have that power. Right you rather just stay in studio like, and make music. I swear to God. I swear. So let's. When did you fall in love with music? At least that's your true love. I've all my life because okay. my dad is a pastor. You know, I grew up in the church environment. So all my life, I've been playing drums from like the age of four. What like, church did you guys used to? Be? What church? So my dad had his own church. My dad was like a pastor, a missionary. He used to go, yeah. So, yeah, I grew up in the church environment. I was playing instruments. Mm. I used to play drums. Mm. So, is he still a pastor? Is he still around? Yeah, he's a missionary. So how does he feel about the type of music you make now? Actually, if, 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 like he has always known that like for a long while now. 
we've crossed that bridge since. <laughs> How did you cross this place? I like to. No, me. like way, way, way back. Mm. Like even when I was way younger, after this music thing, even before I left secondary school. Okay. So he has always been like, I. Well, people are always telling me your son, your your son should not be singing this. Your pastor's child. So we've, we've had that conversation, mm, mm. and we've made the father some promise to each other. You know, we've oh, had that conversation. Really? Okay. Yeah. So we are we are fine. We are past. We are past mm. that. He understands. He Was there a lot of pressure being a preacher's son, growing up? Um, Apart from music, was there just a lot of pressure? Because I imagine if your dad is a pastor, people have expectations of yeah, you. Yeah, people definitely have expectations of you, but I've not, I've, I've never really cared about how people feel. Your church people will not be happy about all the things you said on this podcast. My church people. I mean, hearing that you don't believe in love, you don't believe in marriage, who they think? Ah. But that doesn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> they might think you need deliverance. <laughs> is what I, 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 do you think I need deliverance? Ah, it'd be like, oh. No. It's not that deep. Really? Yeah. All right. So, I mean, I'm I'm curious to know about... I love watching people have a dream and a flair for yeah. something and go after it. Yeah. You know, what has been the hardest, you know, um, part of fulfilling young John in terms of, you know, yeah. knowing I want to do this. I want to do this at this scale. Yeah. And I want to do this for this while. Like, how have you been able to navigate around starting yeah. you know and just running through your career yeah so like um it's been a long journey kind of like mm. but like i feel like i'm just i'm just like starting you know mm. like my first as a producer my first uh mainstream it song was story for the gods 2014 that was like nine years story ago yeah that was like mm-hmm. nine years ago so it's been like nine years coming before then i've been so it's been a long journey mm. already but like I've always known, as I've always known, like where I'm going is really, it's very, very far. Mm. I don't know how to. Mm. How did you meet Olamide? Yeah, so when, when I came to Lagos, um, I used Olamide? to work in, uh, I used to be staying in Badon. Okay. Yeah. So when I came to Lagos, there's this studio I used to work in, I used to stay in, I used to live in its factory studios. Shout out to BT. No, if factory. So he used to let us live in the studio, work in the studio and all of that. So that same studio, Olamide, when Olamide um um first le- um left Coded Tunes, when he did first of all, that's where he used to come and record with Fuse. Mm. You know, so I always used to be in the studio in the corner, because Fuse was my guy, you know, I always just used to be in the corner somehow, somehow. Mm. So I when they recorded um first of all um the baddest guy ever, when they recorded the baddest guy ever um baddest guy ever lived yeah guy ever lived that lived album the mm. young me where that album I was mm. always around but just you know but then some somehow somehow me and Bado got to work then we did story for the girls that was our first mm. record I put out and mm. it became really big and and the rest is me. history yeah. how do you think the industry has accepted your transition have they. Well, I feel like some people are, have, have like some people are still like side eye, mm. like bombastic <laughs> side eye. <laughs> some people are still like you know, but but like I always I always knew that it won't be easy. Mm. So I mean, I, did you ever watch the Kanye West documentary? Yes, I did. And I I knew his struggles with people just wanting to box him in that producer box. Mm. They just never wanted him to leave that box, and mm. um, it was tough for him to break out into doing him. Um, I mean, the industry here, I think, is a bit softer and nicer in the sense that if you know someone, I might be wrong, yeah. if you know someone like now, you working with Bado, do you think it had helped the yeah, transitioning? Definitely. Okay. Like, yeah, definitely. Because, like, I feel like as a producer... Uh, you kind of know a lot of these artists already, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And they were already kind of had, like, a, a catalog, like, mm. you know, strong catalog. And I mean, I, it wasn't easy, per se, but, like, I just really made up my mind and anything I make up my mind to do, I like to see it through Mm. regardless of, you know, it's not been easy, trust me. But like, keep pushing, pushing. Mm. You're actually the man of the moment. You know that, right? I did try. I mean, come on. I I beg. Come on, you kind of know that. Don't hype me. (laughs) (laughs) You're funny. Uh, Does that put a lot of pressure on you? I won't use the word pressure, Mm -hmm. but like, Puts me on my on my ten toes, mm. you know, like cause I wanna I wanna always do more. I love to do more. When I do something, what's on my mind is what's next. What's next? Mm. I always wanna do more. So it's just yeah, 
That's what it is. Mm. And I think I've read somewhere that you used to have a lot of social anxiety. Do you used to have that? Yeah. Like way back, it was really? crazy. So how did you how did you get through break the wall of social anxiety into being so comfortable? Well, um, my mom used to be a psychologist. Oh. Yeah, she actually studied guidance and counseling, you know. So So that means you're very well balanced. Now, if you have a problem, you have therapy at home. You could do that. You can just call your mom and you get free therapy. Yeah, that's how I used to be, but she's late now. So Oh, I'm so yeah. sorry about that. Nice no, fine. That's yeah. a while back now. So. Okay. How old were you when you lost her? I was um like that was like four years ago. Yeah. No, one almost five years ago. How yeah. old were you then? Yes, yeah, so I was twenty two then. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, so she used to be my personal mm-hmm. psychologist. Mm. So yeah, she really helped me with those moments and I just knew that I had to, at some point, I just knew that I had to, like, just fight it. I mean, these days, sometimes it still just pops mm. up, you mm. know, but then... I How think... bad does it get? Like, I, I, I'm I, curious. I have yeah. a lot of anxiety, yeah. but I feel like mine is is more... For what we do, being in this yeah. creative space is tough. Do you know what yeah. I mean? You're always, like, as you said, onto the next, onto the next, and sometimes yeah. you're anxious just, you know... Okay. for nothing you know yeah. but then I don't know what it's like to you know have this social anxiety that you talk about like yeah. what what are the symptoms is it that you just don't feel comfortable in public or yes yeah, so, so a lot of times uh, like I just want to just I just want the house because being in a public space just kind of sh- stresses me out like don't let me say being in public space like but I think it's better now because I realize I don't have a choice you mm. know but when I was way younger I would rather like it's, it's so bad that before like okay before even this interview I have to like self-talk myself not it's not that deep don't mm. let me say self-talk but like I can just go do it and I got to cause, <laughs> just you give know, yourself ginger you know, because, <laughs> you know what I'm saying because yeah. most of the time I'm just laid back and all of that mm. I'd rather just be in my own space mm. and you know so like I'm not saying it's a good thing or I actually wish I was more outgoing mm. I feel like it would have been easier for me to like navigate and do mm. a lot of things I'm supposed to do mm. you know but so so yeah. let's talk about friendships do you yeah. have a lot of friends not really like I've had the same set of friends for years mm. the same like I mean the same set of friends for as long as I can remember do you find it difficult to make friends? Yes, very difficult. What I feel is like the most be- difficult part? I feel like because I'm not so outgoing or I can't really, so people don't really understand like my real intention. People don't, I feel like people don't get me so much. Mm. They f- like it's easy to me to understand something I say or something I do. Or- Are you outspoken? No, not, not really. <laughs> like, if, not really. Like, I'd rather just. No, what I mean by outspoken, when you say people find it difficult to get you are you the kind of person that will just speak your mind so that's that's the thing because mm-hmm. I won't speak my mind okay so it's, it's no, difficult to be friends yeah with you. it's difficult so I feel like you, you even get staring to people you mm. know so I've just been used to just being numb so what do you do when you're by yourself me I love I love to play video games okay I love to play video games mm. I love to, I love to make music mm. you know I love to just hang I think I just did. <laughs> What's that mean? Why do I feel like that hang involves somebody else? Uh, Why do I feel like the hang involves somebody else? Yeah, I know. That's I uh, uh, no. Uh, when you say I just like to hang. No, I just like, no, just hang. Like just did, like just chill. That's what I mean by hang. Mm. I don't really hang <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's it's interesting to know someone who you have like records that are so huge and your personality yeah. comes through your music it's so huge and you're an introvert so how do you I don't like to say I'm an introvert because once I get comfortable with you it's you like worry? yeah like the, I get touched no worries. yeah <laughs> no but I was going somewhere with that question like how yeah. do you marry the both um, knowing that you want to do this music thing and you yeah. want to do it for it involves going on tour it involves yeah. interviews it involves like literally socializing yeah. and yeah. going to events so, so, and stuff so basically like like I, I said before I've I realized I don't have a choice so I learned that I have to always ginger like ginger myself like I mean, I, and besides, I enjoy these things. Mm. You know, I'm, I enjoy the music. I enjoy where it's going. 
I enjoy the kind of life I can live because of my music. And I, the imagination of even was what more to come. Mm. Like if I go at that. So because of these things, I think it makes it easy for me to like, when I'm about to go on stage, I'm like, Jiggy, let's go and mm. do this, you know. Mm. And I have an amazing time on stage, you know, I enjoy once it's done. I don't pay back. Mm. <laughs> How know? do you think the fame has, has changed you, if it has? No, I won't say it has changed me. It, it has Come just... on, you're walking through a room and you know that everybody in there, you know, is like, oh my God, that's young John. Oh my God, I'm, it must, there must be a spring to your step. I mean, maybe you say, yeah, definitely, like, yeah, but I won't say change, like, core change. Mm. Definitely, like, it makes you more aware, more self-aware when you know that, oh, yes, you have to do some certain things, some certain ways. It's a normal thing, but, like, I've really just, all of this to me is, like, I don't feel like I'm even, like, where I am Mm -hmm. yet. Like, I've always really had this big dream, like, very, very, very very big dream you know so like i sometimes i even feel like i'm not even halfway there yet so to me it's more about the work mm. than mm. the you sound like someone who keeps himself very grounded and focused mm, i like to believe that mm. yeah so if i if i went through your dm right now who, who are people that you're chatting with what what, what are your conversations like there dm my dm yeah should we go through it together I'll go through yours. I can give you mine. It's, I can give it to you. Well, My dear. Don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> Why? Tell me one person you're chatting with. Right so there. it's a lot of work stuff. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait. No. It's a lot of, it's a lot of work. It's honestly a lot of work stuff. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of personal stuff too. Do you enter into like the DMs of... Of who? I was just asking, are you, <laughs> are you... Do you creep through the DMs? No, I mean, if I like somebody... I mean, that's why I'm a, I'm a free person. Like, you know, that's why I'm... What do you mean that's why I'm a free person? That's, that's why I'm in a relationship. So, so if I like someone... So, yeah. funny enough, me, I'm... I've always... Even before all of this, mm-hmm. all of this, Young John, Estraku, Dada, or... Before all of this, I'm always scared of... So, I think they call screenshots. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, afraid of being a scandal. It's, what no, it's not even about scandal. Yeah. Like, I just feel like... I always just feel someone when... Like... You know, like, why? Mm. Why do you have to, you know? So, I've not really been someone that, besides, I'm not that person that will always jump to say how I feel anyway. So, what I always do we is... We have to change that part of our well, show. <laughs> I don't like it at all. I mean, like, you know how many amazing women you might have possibly let go of or people who probably change your perspective on your life for good in terms of how you feel about relationships. Yeah. You just pass them on because you're being very laid back. I mean, so if I went through your DM now, there's nobody you're shooting shots at. So that not shooting shots necessarily. <laughs> like me, I don't used to like shoot direct shots. I would just day maybe with friends. So what I always do is, if I like somebody, I'm always just hoping they like me back. So when I see that, oh, you like see this person like me, I don't know. But I never really want to. But that's shoot such a shots. selfish way to go through this thing. <laughs> Do you know that? I don't like to shoot short. No, no, it's no, it's no, selfish no. ways to go through this thing. How are you going to just wait for the person to like you back? No. Sometimes, do you know that now that you, you're you this huge superstar, yeah. even if they like you, they might feel like, ah, you know, this guy probably has plenty. Anybody that like me should talk with me. I don't go say anything. You know? <laughs> I swear. You're stressing me out so much. <laughs> you I like can't. me, talk. I cannot <laughs> I deal swear. with you. Because I'd rather just, you know, I've always been like that. So, if you like me from... People that I've always known, okay, I some no, I know about as bad. God, no, no, fears maybe so one person will go like me. How do how can a woman get your attention? Because you don't mm. like pictures, yeah, clearly. I mean, by opening their mouth to say it, yeah, but how are they gonna find you? It's not like they're just gonna walk up to you and just be like, Hi, I'm opening my mouth to tell no, you. They, they, like, first of all, it has to be we have to know each other. I mean, we gotta see one day now, nobody say, uh-uh. you Do you know? know how many people you know how many fans you have? That might listen to you and feel a certain thing in their spirit, like this Uloma song. Ah, I so want all of them should come. I don't understand. No, I'm, <laughs> saying, I'm saying that how would if a girl likes you who is yeah. watching or listening to us right yeah. now, how is how is she? How can she get to you? Like, I mean, you you're single, right? And yeah, we just we just have to see one. Meet. I don't know. I don't know. That's I don't know how that will happen. I don't know how that. Maybe maybe this is the part where you say. 
guys, maybe don't send me nude pictures, but let me know who you are. Like, send me, like, you know, proper message. If a girl sends you a message, like, I'm I not like a fan you. of anonymous things like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, it has to be, we, we like, we have to so know. So, you like what you see. You get. It has like, to be someone that you meet or you talk to. Anonymous, I'm not a fan of anonymous. I feel you. you know, so, like, you're not going to, you're never going to be the kind of guy that will go or start dating someone from online. Like, that we met online or like... We, no, like, you know, into your DMs. So, the thing is, I feed off vibrations a lot. Like, mm. because because I don't have power to, like... So, for me to you're really so be... You're lazy, though. No, it's not about... You're be, young. Trust, what do you mean you don't have power to trust Trust me, it's not about why, lazy. Why, why don't you... And this is the problem with this generation. See, that's the thing. Me. I was going somewhere. Yeah, let me land. Okay, land. Finish before I was I trying to say, <laughs> like, if I'm so into someone, like, if I get to meet someone, then we interact and I, I'm so into that. You see, I get like you understand like that's um texting that seems hard. It seems it becomes easy. That's what I'm, I was trying to say. But she has to do the work to get you there. It's not like she has to do the work, but like I can't. I it won't be easy to get that kind of vibe for someone I've never met before. I understand. We yeah. move past the anonymous. Yeah. I'm not trying to hook you up with someone who is anonymous. <laughs> I don't even think you need me to hook you up with anybody. <laughs> I'm just saying that if. You come across as a very laid back guy when it comes to these things. Like yeah. you're probably one of those guys that, yeah, I'll chat with her today. If she's not answering properly, I'm not chatting with her anymore. Mm-hmm. I hit the nail on the head, right? You see? So okay, like w- would you rather like would you rather a guy like to text like if you like someone, why do you have to make him like stress? It's not like I'm making him. Like things yeah. have for instance, yeah. I am a believer of vibrations as you say yeah. you know what I mean but I feel like in this generation sometimes women are also a bit cautious because sometimes some of you guys I'm not saying you no, no, and no, you yeah, yeah. you have to hear me out on this yeah. some guys don't like readily available to some guys like the chase it's yeah. guys that do this hunting thing where if a girl is always available you think ah, she does not have work then I'm not interested well clearly she just has too much time on her hands yeah this is true I've actually it's people say this before this is actually true like some guys probably like the chase but me i don't like the chase it's not <laughs> like i don't like i like the person so like if i like you mm-hmm. it's really about do you like me too if you like me you don't have to put me through but all do you that. ask the person right right off the back like if how do you that's where i'm you know what that's why yeah. you keep thinking i'm not letting you finish you know yeah. exactly what i'm trying do you ask them do you like me back or you just go by vibrations no so I feel like if I like someone I want to always hang out with them right okay. if you like me you will always you like you want to like you go on dim with me that you know understand like spend mm-hmm. so like I feel like that's that's a sign if you like someone you want but if I just do you say if you, just, you know tell me say you want like we are not hanging out you don't want to like you understand I'm mm-hmm. like hey what's up what's good you don't want to reply mm-hmm. in my head Am I or am I getting it wrong? <laughs> no, you're not. Yeah. I, I get you to a certain yeah. degree, but I'm also just trying to bring you out of being too comfortable. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because I feel like there's I know that I'm I'm not I mean, it's I think young people yeah. who don't have work to do who believe in I'll text him and I'll text him in three days. Like yeah. all those games, I don't like yeah, to play them know. as well. Yeah. But I also know that some guys also feed off if every time they text you, you're quick to yeah, respond. Yeah. I've heard guys say this thing around yeah. me, like, ah, that one, if I talk to her now, she, she, she's never busy. Yeah. I'm like, what? Who talk? Maybe she's making time out for, for you. you. Like, yeah. why do you think she's never busy? And then when a woman is too available sometimes, it's yeah. a huge turn off to certain guys and women. I have to be honest. There are women too who, I think I'm also somehow on that border. Like, like yeah. if a guy always has time, I start to look at him funny. Like, ah, you know, mm-hmm. you know, busy yeah. conquering the world, trying to find something to do. You know, yeah. Well, like I feel like th- there's a balance between all of these things. Of course, like, of course, of course. Of course, it's not like a twenty-four hour. Like, mm. but if you really like someone, I, I feel like you're just gonna want to mm. somehow, 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 pass that message. That's Regardless. incredible. Yeah, I agree. So, so the music game, it it keeps changing. Has yeah. changed so much from the time where people you know, would release music and have like a whole media team, radio mm. rounds, television rounds. Now you have like streaming platforms that make yeah. your music literally go viral yeah. once it drops. Um, I know that for a lot of artists, it's helped in terms of also connecting and 
you know, moving your music from one continent to another. But um, which one of your songs would you say has done amazing numbers and has also sort of traveled further than you could have ever imagined? No, I would say Extra Cool. Yeah. Yeah, because like, yeah, Extra Cool. Do you do all those challenges on TikTok as well? You said? Do you do all the challenges on TikTok? For extra cool. No, for your music in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so so the thing is sometimes some songs just pop off on all these social media. People mm-hmm. start to do like choreography. So sometimes I try to also get involved, you know, joining in the all of just to because you know, just to push the music. Mm-hmm. That's the motive at the end mm-hmm. of the day. Mm-hmm. You know? So is there anyone that you'd like to do like a production with? Is there anyone home and abroad yeah. that you know is on your vibration that you'll be like, you know what? I want to... Like make music with I them. I want to make music with, with this Yeah, a, a lot of people. Stamina yeah. was amazing, by the way. Yeah, your thank you. Your voice was really you. incredible. Thank you. Nice. Great song. I love... Mm. Shout out to Tiwa Savage and Ira Star. Yeah. 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 So any other person I'm asking? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I would love to make music with almost everybody. I'm a collaboration guy. Collaboration oh. above competition. So. Okay. How does it work? Are there people that you probably just reach out to and be like, hey, I have this song that I think would be great for you? Or how does it so, work? So, how it works, I feel like different people have their patterns. Like, mm. But how I like to do it is, because I don't like to force things. I just record. I'm just recording. I'm just doing my thing. So, if someone will meet somebody and vibe, like, I have songs, you know, oh, we should, we should do something fine. Oh, you know. Mm. Like, so instead of forcing it, I like to just, I believe like every, when, something is going to work out, you will just know from mm. the vibrations rather than trying to chase it mm. or be like, hey, I want to do this collaboration. Hey, bro, Babek, she make a, you know, but like if you, if you probably meet someday, the vibe, mm. the vibrations is right, then why not? How do you know, as a producer, how do you know what song is going to be the next? I've always been curious about that. You know how People who have like songs, like yeah. you say, you, you're constantly recording, you probably yeah. don't know the amount of songs you have right now. <laughs> but how do you know the one that is going to be the one that you'll be like, this is a banger. This one is going to definitely. I feel like you never really know. Yeah. It's just instinct. Okay. Like, I, I I trust my instinct. So, and thank God I have an amazing team. Mm. You know, so when we're about to drop music, we're all like, what, which one do you think we should drop? And we just, and that's it. We just believe in the instinct. Like, believe in the vibe. Believe mm. in the, mm. yeah. Shout out to all the girls who are rocking with Young John. He loves you guys. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. I really, really enjoyed our conversation. And I'm ex- actually very excited about, you know, your journey. I think mm. you you definitely, you you know how people will say, when you look at someone and when you hear them and you marry the two, it's like, wow. That's how I feel right now. And it's amazing. Well done. Thank you. Why are you so quiet? <laughs> I, I was, you were talking. <laughs> <laughs> this guy stressed me so much in this chat, guys. And that's it, guys. We had Young John today and I actually, yeah. actually enjoyed the conversation. Yeah, I did too. I like, did. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Well I mean, done. anytime I see you, give me a side eye, but let's leave that one too. <laughs> <laughs> so later, make sure you tune in again on the next episode of Talking Moments. 